The Ministry of Labor and Social Security continued to provide support to Jamaica's working and vulnerable population in 2017. The year got off to a good start as the Labor Minister dispatched 2017's first batch of farm workers to Canada early in January. Later in the year, Jamaican farm workers and their employees at the Gebbers Farm in Washington awarded $650,000 in academic grants to 13 students from various schools in Clarendon. On the policy front, the 19-member Labour Reform Commission completed and presented the Reform Agenda Report for Jamaica in July. It will strengthen the Minister's mandate for human capital development, empowerment of vulnerable groups in the society and incorporate more Jamaicans in the development process. Meanwhile, the Occupational Safety and Health Bill, aimed at protecting the safety and health of all workers, was tabled in Parliament. And both Houses of Parliament passed two critical bills, paving the way for the reform of pension arrangements for employees in the public sector. The affordability of public sector pensions is a matter of grave concern, and with it, not only the well-being of our economy, but clearly the well-being of our workers. The Programme of Advancement through Health and Education PATH was government's main vehicle for social security intervention in 2017. Those registered on the programme received a 30% bump in their benefits on June 1. 17 tertiary level students were awarded scholarships totaling $15 million to mark the 15th anniversary of PATH. $220 million in bursaries and grants were also provided to tertiary students and those transitioning from secondary schools. This is intellectual capital investment, and we want to implore Jamaican families to secure the future now for the next generation by investing in their children's education. Send the children to school, encourage them to do well, and the government will help to further their educational pursuits. The ministry also announced the spending of $115 million to transport students on the path. And during the year, Cabinet approved the PATH graduation strategy to provide employment opportunities for beneficiaries. Those exiting the program will get access to funds over a six-month transition period with provision for a reapplication exercise every four years. The Labor and Social Security Ministry also provided targeted intervention for persons with disabilities in 2017. The Kingston Early Stimulation Program Assessment Center and Multipurpose Complex was upgraded to provide improved care for early childhood children at the 95 Hanover Street facility. This modern center represents and provides a new lease on life for children with disabilities whose well-being and welfare will be further enhanced. Following that, ground was broken in April for the expansion of the Stimulation Plus Early Childhood Development Center in Eastern Kingston at a cost of $70 million. Meanwhile, the Jamaican Association on Intellectual Disabilities commissioned into service a vertical wheelchair lift to provide easier access for persons with mobility challenges. The Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities launched a $58 million partnership with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and Digicel Foundation to promote the rights of persons with disabilities. Through the Ministry's Social and Economic Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities project in Western Jamaica, 502 persons were trained in vocational, customer service and life skills. 275 of them were placed in organizations for at least six months to gain work experience and exposure. In 2017, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security also focused attention on advancing the development of a national registry for senior citizens. The registry will seek to capture data on all our senior citizens and lay the foundation for the government to better address their needs. When flood rains devastated several homes in May, the ministry commenced distribution of relief funds to 30 persons in St. Catherine. It is my hope this afternoon that the financial assistance being provided will fill some immediate needs and I encourage you to use this one-off assistance wisely. The ministry also provided assistance to 150 residents of Montego Bay whose houses and other belongings were destroyed by the heavy rains that swept through sections of the city on November 22. And to situate itself for more development intervention beyond 2017, the ministry broke ground in October for the construction of a new St. Anne Parish office. Construction will cost $513 million, 
But with plans to rent some of the 27,000 square feet of office space, the venture should generate income of $26.62 million per year. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security is committed to providing quality service to our clients and by extension to ensuring that the working conditions of our valued employees are of the best quality. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security in 2017, advancing prosperity for Jamaican workers and the most vulnerable in society.